All right, all right. I said we'll be quick, and quick is what we are. Welcome back to the Creator Clash Roy Al, and we are here to see Aim Assist against Elegant Emus again. This is, you know, we, we see a few faces that we recognize here, and oh boy, do I recognize some of these names. Indeed, so do I as well. One of them uh, was actually on my team at one point, um, on my team at one point being Cactus was on my team at some point on Team Persistence. What a great member he was when he was on the team. So, rooting, so secretly Baez here, rooting for him. Look, <laughs> <laughs> let to be known now, and and he is teamed up with Cornflower, great content creator herself. Um, I'm not sure if their opponents are she or they. So we're going to be respectful here and go with Day for now. Um, Dirt Knight, they are also a great, great content creator. I've seen some of their content, and I'm not familiar with Nug. And as far as the other team, Amos is the, is the first team, yeah? The first I assume. Team. Yeah, they the first are. team. The Alpha team that we're seeing here. The yes. Alpha team. Okay, I had a feeling. I see an AA in one of their tags. We got Hoenn Hero, one of the head TOs of IPO and the founder of Low Inc. You can't forget him. We got the Barry, everyone's favorite Charger content creator, backline content creator. And the other two, I, again, I'm not familiar with, but I will make myself familiar. We have Lily and Bam Booty. <laughs> well, Bam Booty, they go by, um, but that, I had it in my head and I just absolutely <laughs> ranked. Nico, if Nico is where they go by online. They did the recent sprinkler um, only challenge inside. Oh. If you saw that video. Online. I think I've seen it on my feed. We're starting. Oh, oh, this doesn't look like a great starting. Clams, Scorch, Gorge. Although we're start, they're all here. They're all here. Are we? We have good news. We have good news. We're starting. Everyone's here. Let's go. <laughs> Indeed, let's go. And we see the comps come out here, and we see a pretty, a pretty meta comp come out on the side of aim assist. We got the fifty-two with the splash and the bamboozler and a range blaster so a lot of chip and a lot of different specials that help them move in double well mind you with that that's very interesting now on the side of elegant we got that force pro you'll see that every day with the 96 for that cracking and maybe some cracking cheese you'll probably see that and a shot and range blaster so both teams wanted some decent comps here I, I i hear that you said meta comp and then i and then i see on the team that we've got a bamboozler and then no zooka and no tactical or on site. Okay, fair team, enough. So. Okay, fair so. enough. But, but, but I mean, it's not meta, but if 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 Zuka and Tactical didn't exist, then it would be meta. It would be a good comp, okay? <laughs> so, but, okay, you know what? Semi meta. It's like the. It's semi meta. Call it. Okay. It's mid. I, I can live with that. <laughs> It's I can mid. live with that. <laughs> Talking about mid, everyone at the moment just dancing around mid at the moment, trying to find picks, trying to find opportunities to go on in. Cornflower gets caught out by the band Blues are there, and now they're going to get on pu pushed back. But only one player is left alive on the side of Elegant Assist. Uh, I take that bank, make that a full on wipeout as the Power Clam goes straight on in the basket. Uh huh. See, see, you see why I'm calling this meta, right? When, I, when I'm telling you this, the cop, they're running flows. Perfectly get it. All these weapons can complement each other. We see the chip moving up here with the bamboozler. And then Crab Tank got the ready for the splash. And then the Range Brother also gonna benefit off the chip that the Crab Tank and the Bamboozler provide. It's going to be one hell of a cop to get through. And that is why I call it meta, because it's actually a very good cop. <laughs> just the attack the cooler. That's it. Just the attack the cooler. <laughs> just the one extra thing. And now elegant emus there on the counter oh, push as Kraken. well. Kraken coming on after the baskets pop. Nub over there. Lead has been switched over, but also three players go down on aim assist. And again, that's going to allow Elegant Emus to maybe find some more, but the clam economy isn't in their favor. Cornfowl luckily finding some clams up there, but can they keep the basket open for long enough? They only... Oh, we do see Cactus over there on the shot. They're bringing up some clams mm -hmm. to the rear. They're going to get a few more in. They're going to keep the basket open for even longer, but now aim assist, they're nearly fully back. But they just keep keeping getting pushed back. They keep getting sent back into the spawn pad. And Barry, though, getting two spots. Can they make that a triple? They see Cactus there, but they opt to wisely back on out. But 29, a tremendous first push coming out from the Elegant Emus. Yeah, indeed. And with the weapon comes that they're running right now, with that Kraken at the ready, Amethyst really needs to aggro here. You don't want to sit back right now because with Kraken Cheese online and have a possibility to happen, you need to push in and get something going here. See, Kraken at the ready, 
as we speak. And I don't think he going down to give it the power clams and give it to all these clams over to side of elegant that they will be in trouble. But we see Nova going to pop the cracker just to use it. It's going to try to find some stragglers here. It's not going to find it at the moment, but you can get rid of the crab tank. That's a find much there, and, and Nova will probably go down there. But the 96 doing a lot of work there on the side of elegant. And so that we see Zuko come out as well. So man, it's still a stalemate right now as we speak. We see Amos is keeping all their clans and everyone left alive, but they need to start pushing in right now with these specials. They need to start pushing in, but the, and they have so many clans to their name. But can they deliver their clans on into the basket? Cornflower getting pushed on back there as Amos is looking at maybe to gain a bit more space, gain a bit more momentum, move a little bit more forward. But Elegant Emus, it's touching such a tight position over that choke point there just making sure that none of aim assists players or clams go through that but lily on the crab can they find any picks can they deliver anything but it doesn't look like as everyone's getting to have to get pushed back booyah bomb is also going to take them out as two players go down on aim assist elegant emus looking at maybe getting another push going yeah, and I think the issue is is that Elegant's comp has so much range to their name with the Pro and a 96, and of course a shot with Zuka and a range button. It's a lot of range, and it's a lot to push through. It's a lot to go through, especially when they have that paint control. They're going to dunk a ball in here and get a few more clans to go with that, and bring in their pedipus a little bit more. But they get up, I find another pick there, able to take out some of their aim assist. Elegant's looking to push in and get a little bit more clans in, but they will go down. We're only just going to go into this game. It's all of that time left. But it's that range that I'm talking about who makes it hard to, for them to push in. And I think that Amosis isn't capitalizing over each special they pop. They really got to push up with these specials that they're popping and just kind of sitting there and just popping them. Absolutely. Owen has the wave breaker at the ready, but will they be able to use it before they get taken out? No, they are not. They get taken out by the 96 there. Derp Knight here on the blaster looking at maybe just eyeing around some corners. Amosis does have a power clamp. And Lily gets yeah. the splat onto Cactus. Can they find anything else out of that crab tank? Doesn't look like, but they are going to gain a bit of position there. As overtime he is going to get past the halfway mark. They're going to try and push it even further. Bambooty, they're going on forward, but they get taken on out. And that will be a wipeout ending game number one. Yeah, good luck getting through all of that on the left side with all that chip damage and a crack in it and just everything there. Yeah, good luck through all that. You really wanted that crab tank to force everyone back but instead it got popped for them to go back into mid and that's that was the win condition there for the side of emesis and they just couldn't get it but for the side of elegant they played that you, you, you can't say they played that any better they, they they cannot play that any better they played that perfectly with their comp oh absolutely and it was such a great showcase from them as now we're gonna look at to see what some a lot of the highlights that can a lot of pushes a lot of, and that was such a strong first push coming up from elegant emu setting them up very strongly for the rest of the game you know aim assist got such a great push to start off the game but elegant emus they just they just completely one up them there yeah indeed he just it took their push and did it so much better and just able to keep things going especially with the cracking at the ready but we will be going to tower control ship shake cargo now and i think that with Aim assist is calm. They can find a little bit more success here, especially with how much ground they can hold. You just gotta actually do it. Yeah, like I'm I'm curious to see. Like I always like seeing this the dichotomy between the more aggressive ranked modes we have and then the a bit more the passive ones. The passive ones being, you know, Splat Zones, Tower Control, and the aggressive ones being Clan Blitz and Rainmaker. I tend to associate them quite similarly. Ignore my pronunciation on that word. <laughs> but going into tower control, ship shake, and you know, looking at some of the weapons these play, these places, obviously, um, Nico Bambooty is gonna very likely pull out that bamboozler again, as we saw them straight on to game one. But you know, seeing the wide range of choice that the Barry has here, like they've they've put on their selection, they've got the E leader, they've got the charger, they've got the scripper, they've got the um the blah blah. And they've got the Nautilus, like so much to choose from. And then the elegant emus, they just like, they're just full of choice over there on the right corner. Yeah, indeed they are. They barely pulled a 52 last game. So if he pulled up 52, then he needs to pull up a V shot if he really wanted to. If you can play 52, that's all I'm saying. But we will be getting into this very shortly. And we will be taking you guys to game two of this wonderful set in this wonderful tournament. Absolutely. And let's see. 
what the players bring on out here. You know, I'm we're starting each of these games with a very long play of it. It's giving me a heart attack every single time. Ooh! Barry going to go and switch on over to you the custom. The, the cust, is it the Kraken? Is, I think it's the custom. Yes, custom meat leader. leader. Yeah, that's, yeah that's custom meat leader scope. Yes. Custom meat leader scope at that with that beacon and the Kraken. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the scope. <laughs> with, that e with that beacon Kraken. Interesting choice there. So double charger with the bamboozler as well. So this is a very interesting comp coming out. And then you go back to very basic with the sapping shot. So nothing very special there. But hey, the other two weapons are cool. But hey, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see if we're going to see much of a change in how this game plays with such a vast change to their comp, but Elegant Emus, you know, kind of remaining a bit similar. But the Bro, definitely a very interesting pick to come on out as Elegant Emus touches the tower to start off with, but they go two players down. That's going to now allow Aim Assist to maybe get some movement going on their side of the field. And uh, Elegant is always going to have a pro, because that's what Cornflower is known for. She is the pro woman. Or she is, she is the pro person. She only plays pro. That's why I don't know from us. Put against them, playing with them, and just other things. I've only seen them play pro. So and look at all have a pro. We can see if they different is here. They're getting a lot of pressure here, and we can also talk about this neo machine switch. So double Zuka, which is meta, right? And then the voices are also going to help mark the members so they know what they're zooking. So that's going to be very helpful. Yeah, and you know, Elegant Emus, they're getting such a strong push going here. They've already cleared on through the first checkpoint, looking at getting that even further, but two players going down. Nub now, the only one left alive. They've opted to back on out there as Aim Assist looks at getting some space back, looks at getting some control back, and the Barry, they've shoot, they're putting that e leader straight down the middle of the field. You've got to feel scared when you see Barry's e leader come down the whole range of the field there. Yeah, indeed you do, but good thing this map offers a lot. Oh, a double with the Kraken! Barry popping off there a little bit. Gonna get a dope with the Kraken and set up right now for a little bit of shots there, but does get taken down. But yeah, no, you do gotta respect the E-leader here, especially if you are sitting down the middle, but good thing this map offers a lot of coverage and a lot of ways to go through, especially when you're running double Zuka. So the charge isn't that much of an issue if you play your cards right. And we're gonna see them push back into May after getting that double kill. And they're going to get another push going instead of Elegant Diamond. I mean, Elegant, not Diamond. Keep on the train. Keep that tower chugging. Hohen hugging around the left. Nico on the Bamboozler. Looking at maybe getting a little bit of a mini flank on there. But the machine has just as much range as them. And takes them on out. Now... Has the Trizuka now at the ready, looking at seeing if they can Ouch. get anyone using the parabolas that they have at their disposal. Not going to find anyone there, but they, Elegant Emus, are going to go and clear the second and final checkpoint. They've only got a few points remaining left, but Aim Assist is getting the splat. Cactus hops on the tower, but a wipeout will end the push, but Aim Assist has such a long road ahead of it and so much paint to get across if they want to take the lead into their favor. Yeah, it's only a minute and 35 left to go into this game. And we'll pop the kill the world right now and the crack at the same time. Well, probably probably could have gotten a top right and need the machine to go down. They have a long way to go. This will be very hard to push through. They have one Zuka compared to their two. So they have, at some point, they got to stall out their pushes they can get through, but I don't want to get opportunity because they keep going down here on that top left side. Every fight happening on their top left, they are lost. And that's why they oh, only got to they want to double there by Cactus. It's going to probably put that Shazuka and probably extend their kills a little bit, but it's going to be smart and it's off the hold that Shazuka, never mind, he did not be smart. Oh, oh. that heart shot! There onto the bamboozler. You hate this thing. Kai is going to move up there. We're trying to push that top right side. It's going to go to fight the Baron and we'll win that fight if he's successful. Cactus on a killing streak as we speak. Cactus just coming on oh my out. Goodness. They've got the wipeout. That tower is just pushing and pushing. His aim assist, do they have any of their aim assist left in the arsenal? Or is it already all used up as that tower is just getting so close? Barry, though, hops on the tower of the Kraken, and you cannot defeat a Kraken. It is hell on earth. It is what squids see in their nightmares as we have 30 seconds left on the clock and now cactus they see the two players over on the left but can they deliver the splats 
No, they cannot. They get taken out. And the elegant emus, they're dancing the tower so close to aim assist's goal. They've only got a single point remaining left. So elegant emus, if they, sorry, if aim assist wants to take this, they have to go all the way home. But with no one holding possession of that tower. That's going to be the yeah, end of the game right is. there. <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't even have to push. They could just look at go back to mid and they went again. And they're, they were basically spawn camping them. I'm not even going to lie to you. They were spawn camping them. It was insane how good Elegant Evie was there to just win the game. And they take this set with a convincing, dominant, dominant, clean 2 0. Yeah, absolutely. And seeing the bit of the replay here, seeing what splats made it count here <laughs> we get to, oh we get to see this double on the crack it again Barry. <laughs> oh just the chef's kiss of krakens that is what you see in your nightmares and nub just getting those parabolas with the tri zuka cactus on that flank it's, you know so many great plays all around here but while all players had some amazing plays, Elegant Emus just had the consistency of the aggression, the consistency of being able to push, and the consistency of being able to get both games of this this set, setting themselves up for victory, taking on. As yeah, well. indeed. So, what a great set that was. 2-0 back to backers now we'll get ahead into set number three of the groups the final the final round of the group stage and we'll get back to you very soon on what that will end up being so don't go anywhere the creator clash royale will be back 